Hey, what's going on, crew? Welcome to another episode of the Pardon My Pancreas podcast. Today, we're talking about how to eat your diabetes for a better A1C, better time and range, better quality of life. I'll tell you exactly what I mean and more by that when you stick around. I got a story for you and a solution to diabetes overwhelm. So, without any further ado, let's get into our theme song. I've spent the last 10 years pushing the limits while identifying trends and patterns in my type 1 diabetes management. Follow along as I learn, apply, and share the fitness, nutrition, and lifestyle strategies that I've learned from diabetes experts around the world. The real question is, how can we live fearlessly with diabetes while maintaining stable blood sugars? This podcast is here to give you the answer. My name is Matt Vandevecht, head coach and co-founder of FTF Warrior, and welcome to Part of My Pancreas. All right, so over the last uh, couple of weeks, couple of months, you know, we've been moving in, getting settled into our new house, and I am quickly realizing that being a homeowner is entirely stressful and all-consuming. I uh, never really fully believed my dad when he told me growing up that house projects will consume you if you let them, and uh, how they would keep him up at night quite often. Now, there's always something to be fixed, right? And uh, now that I am a homeowner, I can tell you that this is absolutely true. <laughs> it is always on my mind. Uh, in fact, installing a simple door closer on our garage door, weeks of stress. I cannot understand how this is just always on my mind, but it is. Uh, but nonetheless, getting into work projects, house projects, and getting things moving in the right direction so that uh, we can finally move in and feel like we're settled, right, uh, has been quite stressful and overwhelming. And over the last couple of weeks, looking at uh, the variety of projects that I am going to have to complete at some point or another uh, is is quite stressful. So uh, initially, we had hired um, you know companies to help us out with a lot of the bigger projects, things that I had no chance at completing. Uh, you know, looking at restoring, not restoring, replacing the floors. You know, painting the walls, like stuff that I'm just. That's not my realm of specialty, right? I'm going to stay in my lane as a diabetes coach. Uh, so they took care of all of those things and you know, take the big tools, you know, taking like the jackhammer and all sorts of big, big machinery to our place of living and, and just destroying it and then rebuilding a lot of the components that made it safe for us to live here. Uh, and upon completing a lot of the big tasks, we started realizing there's still a lot of small tasks that need to be completed. So started compiling a list and before you know it, uh, the company that we were using uh, got a little too busy and you know they are very popular <laughs> and so we quickly realized that the earliest we could get some of these things fixed would be months if not further away and we're like you know what? I don't want to wait that long so uh, I started picking up on these tasks myself and deciding uh, I need to learn how to do some home improvement right and get these things fixed like installing simple bathroom fixtures for example uh, but before too long, I took a look at the grand scheme of things and realized that the amount of house projects that I have is exponentially growing week after week as we determine which things need to be fixed, which things need to be improved. And uh, my wife, you know, every once in a while, a day or two, say, oh, could you fix this? Could you make that? Uh, and before too long, I realized that my list had grown out of control. And uh, I decided to get it all out of my head and onto paper. If you're ever feeling overwhelmed, this is a great place to start. It's just to get it out of your head. You know, oh, I don't know where to start. Just write down everything. All right, so I grabbed my whiteboard uh, and I wrote down all of the house projects that I could think of that it needed to get done, that I wanted to get done, that were even on my mind as possibilities. Uh, ended up getting somewhere between 25 and 30 different house projects <laughs> of things that needed to be fixed or replaced or you know, you name it, uh, and suddenly found myself more overwhelmed. <laughs> it was hectic. I uh, called my wife into the office and was like, I am frozen. And I feel like I'm going to procrastinate just because I don't know where to start. There's so many things to get done. And she grabbed the different color expo marker, went over to the whiteboard and started putting dots on things that were absolutely necessary. She's like, okay, start with these, right? Like, don't get distracted doing the stupid little things. Um, you know, you don't have to paint the fence yet. We should probably get a working gate in place first. I'm like, okay, whew, that helps, right? Prioritize. It's a big component to this is getting started with prioritizing things. Because uh, what I was doing 
ultimately is that all of my spare time was going to house projects yes but i was bouncing back and forth making a little bit of progress in each section and it felt like i wasn't getting anywhere because there was no real progress being made i wasn't checking things off my list and just so you know a large part of our feeling of fulfillment or happiness comes from progress whether it's through work or relationships or uh, skill sets that we're learning like we feel good when we make progress uh, so in the absence of progress, I was starting to feel not only overwhelmed, but a little bit depressed as well. It's just this overwhelming uh, amount of house projects that were kind of accumulating right on my list. And so she helped me prioritize initially, marking things off that needed to be completed. But even still, there was like 10 things that had to be prioritized. So I found myself each weekend trying to get a little bit of each thing done, just grasping for air, trying to get things done. And uh, over the course of a couple of weeks, getting to a place where I finally found myself just feeling burnt out and just done. I was like, I don't even care anymore. Let's just live in a broken mess of chaos. Like, I don't want to deal with this. And really feeling quite down. Uh, you know, I had a moment where it was like, oh, it's because I'm trying to do everything at once. There's zero progress being made. Or if it is, it's very minimal, right? And so often... Uh, with our diabetes, you know, we get into this place where we see the big picture, all these things that need to be fixed. It's our pre bolus, it's our bolus, it's our basil, our correction factor. You need exercise, but not too much. You eat this food, but not that food. Unless it's eight o'clock at night, then don't eat anything, right? And there's so many rules, so many things to focus on. We get overwhelmed, and when there's little progress, especially when it's not matched with the expectations of the work we put into it, we can feel burnt out right? It gets overwhelming. It's a lot. So instead of making progress, what do we do? We sit back and go, you know what? I don't even care. I'm done. I don't care about this anymore. Diabetes is pissing me off and I'm sick and tired of it, right? I know I'm not the only one that's felt like that before. Uh, and within that realm, you get to a place of burnout. The issue with diabetes is, is you can't just sit there and not take care of it, right? Like I can sit here and not work on the house for a week, and it's, it's going to be okay. You know, the house isn't going to fall apart. But if I stop taking care of my diabetes for a week, I'm going to end up in the hospital, right? That's an entirely different situation. It's very dangerous. And so we get this kind of this in between a rock and a hard place type of thing, where if you want to take a break, you can't. But if you want to make progress and don't know how, it feels like you're going to burn out and be overwhelmed and get back to a place where you want to take a break, but can't. Right. So ultimately, as I'm looking at these house projects, like feeling overwhelmed, there's just so many things to get done. They're all priorities. Right. Just like with diabetes, they all technically fall into the realm of being a priority because they all would help you to have better blood sugars, to be healthier. Right. But you can't prioritize 10 different things. That's not how prioritizing works. So instead of prioritizing, realizing that we have to break things up into bite sized pieces. And when I say eat your diabetes, if you're gonna go for a meal, you, if we wanted to eat your diabetes, you couldn't eat everything all in the first bite, right? Like there's, there's this joke, like how would a man eat an elephant? Uh, bite by bite, right? <laughs> you, you don't eat the whole thing all at once. You take it bite by bite by bite by bite. And in doing so, yes, the progress is slow, but you will eventually get to the last bite. You will eventually make it to that finish line of understanding uh, your diabetes, or for me, getting to a place where the projects are completed, and I can go to sleep at night peacefully and know that whew, I made it, I finished that thing, right, that was always on my mind. So, you know, looking over at, I actually have the list next to me right here on the whiteboard, the 30 things that I'm supposed to do, a couple of blue dots that are there, but even with the blue dots that my wife marked as priorities, I have to decide which one of those is getting attacked this weekend right? That is what has to happen. And when you are able to break it down into bite-sized chunks, it's no longer me saying, oh, I got to fix the bathroom fixtures. I got to install the new lighting. I have to go shop for a bathroom mirror. I have to go fix the garage door. No, that's not realistic, right? I need to really manage my expectations of what is possible. Instead, I look at the weekend and say, okay, what is one thing that I can work on this weekend? What is one thing Oh, but I could totally squeeze in two or three. No, what is one thing? If you get to the end of one thing and decide you want to keep going, great, more power to you, right? And so it turned into me saying, okay, 
this weekend, I am going to install the bathroom towel rack. Got it. Sounds stupidly simple, right? Like it's, it's boring. You're like, that's it. Shouldn't that only take like 30 minutes? Yes, hypothetically. <laughs> but what happens nine times out of 10, anytime you make plans, plans change. Same with house projects as it is with diabetes. You go into it thinking, oh, pff, all I have to do is count my carbs and give the proper amount of insulin. Great. Yeah, that's technically all that's on the list, right? But what you didn't know was going to happen is a, a stress ball of activities after you finish that meal. And the stress with the release of cortisol led to a higher blood sugar and threw the whole thing out, right? House projects. I'm just going to do this bathroom towel. Oh, turns out I'm missing a tool <laughs> that I need to go to Home Depot for. Oh, while I'm at Home Depot, I have to get this, this, and that. Oh, but that reminded me this, right? And it turns into a whole thing. So if I set myself up for success by breaking it down into bite-sized pieces, I'm ready for those chaotic moments. I'm ready for the unexpected, and I still get to feel like I'm making progress, which then in turn builds momentum internally and helps me to continue pushing forward with house projects instead of feeling defeated, overwhelmed, and wanting to give up, right? You see how this applies with diabetes? If we try to attack everything all at once, we will fail. There's too many things. There's more than 42 variables that are going to impact blood sugars day in and day out. Whether you experience all of them or just a few of them, it's difficult to map all of them out on day one. And it's going to be day one so long as you don't make progress. So in order to make progress, you have to make day one about solving one problem. Day two, solving the second problem. Day three, and it might not be linear. In fact, most times it's not. You know, this weekend might have been a towel rack. Next weekend might be organize the office for my house projects, right? They don't look the same every single time. So instead of looking at your diabetes as this one giant thing, this massive problems to be solved, instead, look at all of those, right? Like write them down, get them mapped out, get your priorities set. So first step is to brain dump, get everything out on paper so your head can be clear. From that, look at the paper or whiteboard in my case, which of these bajillion things are actual priorities. And how do you determine if it's a priority? You need to determine if it's going to actually move the needle towards your goal, right? So if you look at your diabetes and you're like, okay, I have counting carbs, I have um, going for a walk, and I have understanding the molecular difference between fast acting and long acting insulin. But which of those is actually gonna move the needle towards your goals faster? Is understanding how insulin is manufactured gonna help you? A little bit, maybe, but not as much as starting to count your carbs, right? Getting an accurate idea of how much insulin you should be getting per meal. Great. Use that as step number one. Build momentum. Get into step two. Get into step three. Yes, you can still learn about, you know, the molecular structure of insulin at some point. Learn the manufacturing process that the, the th big three are working on and big pharma and all that crap. But you don't need to know that right now, right? What do you need to do right now? That's going to help you make progress and build momentum. Eat your diabetes, but take it one bite at a time. I promise you it gets easier when you break it up into bite-sized chunks. All right. So uh, I hope that one was helpful for you. Uh, I've certainly felt a lot less pressured by all the house projects building up when I break it up in these realistic expectations that I have for myself now, understanding that I'm not going to get this thing all figured out in, in a month not even in six months, probably. <laughs> There's so many things I have to take care of. And I'm realizing it's okay to make slow and consistent progress and to not sprint to the finish line on day one, because that's never going to be a realistic journey. There are things that will come up. There's going to be road bumps and obstacles that get in the way. And if you slow down and put this into a bite-sized type of arena, you're able to take those obstacles in stride and to continue making forward progress. So with your diabetes, what I want you to do, think about everything that's going on in your head, all the things that you're supposed to get done and learn how to do and strategize for and uh, fix, you know, with your A1C and your time and range and all the things your doctor's telling you to do, get them on paper, just make a big old list, every possible thing that you need to get done. I want you to prioritize it. What's actually going to help me move my blood sugars in the right direction to fix the problems that I'm experiencing, whether it's lows or highs or unpredictability or just frustration, right? Find the priorities and then pick one. That's right. Not two, not three, one. Pick one thing to work on right now. 
and you get to determine the time horizon that you're going to dedicate to that one thing, whether it's a day, an hour, a week, a month, but pick one thing, make progress, and then build on that progression into momentum. All right. And obviously within this realm of picking one project, yes, it's going to take a long time, right? The, the construction company that we were working with, they got busy. I would much prefer to just pay someone else to do this. <laughs> it's so much easier to say, hey, you person who has uh, specialized in this thing that I'm struggling with, can you do this for me? And I'll just give you money, right? That's way easier to do. Um, and as funny as that sounds, that's actually part of what I'm doing today, actually. Uh, there's two ways that you can outsource this progress. One of them is to pay an expert or a specialist to do it for you or to do it with you. And two is to reach out to your existing uh, communities or connections that you have. And that number two is happening today. My dad actually came over. He is really great at house projects, as I saw growing up. Uh, and he's going to help walk me through a few of these things so I can learn how to uh, actually make some some progress happen <laughs> in some of the more difficult projects that I've uh, accumulated. So two things you can do right now. Well, three. We're going to map it out for you. One, you can go pay an expert or a specialist to help you fix your blood sugars, right? This is what doctors and endos can be helpful for. This is what something that I do. I specialize in helping people to stabilize and predict their blood sugars. That's what I've dedicated my life to learning. Two is you can go into your existing community or resources or connections to find people that you can ask for help or guidance. I also do that. We have a free support group. We have tons of free resources. And if you're on YouTube or Spotify or Apple, whatever, hundreds, hundreds of videos and podcasts all available for free. OK, you can use those, too. And then three, you can do it yourself. But if you are going to make sure you're setting realistic expectations, realistic time horizons, because it's going to take a lot longer, it will be more frustrating and it's not as certain. You may have to try to install the same door closer five times over three weekends like I did to make progress. Just like with your diabetes, you might be working on figuring out how to pre bolus for months, if not years. But you can do it. Just break it down into bite sized chunks. All right. So. Pay someone, ask someone, or do it yourself. But whatever route you choose, make progress today. Don't let overwhelm and burnout overcome you. All right, you got this. By the way, if you want help, there are tons of resources that we have. Like I said, tons of free videos on YouTube. Go to FTF Warrior uh, and search that. Tons of podcasts. We have free downloads. We have free courses that are available. Uh, we have a print newsletter that goes out. We have free support groups. Uh, we even have free trainings. And if you're looking for any of those, the first place that I would recommend you start because it will get you into our ecosystem and we'll start letting you know about what are these things that we have available for you, depending on what you're struggling with, of course. It's all customized. Uh, but the first place you can go is diabetesinaction.com grab your blueprint start making some progress i will teach you in that free training how i stabilize my blood sugars how i literally predict where my blood sugars are going to go and that's your first step to getting your blood sugars to cooperate is to get and help making progress building momentum all right so diabetesinaction.com uh, my dad just got here so i'm going to go do some house projects and take full advantage of the time that i have with him it's okay to ask for help i'm doing it literally right now it's how i got to where i'm at today and it's how i can help you get to where you want to go as well all right so diabetesinaction.com i'll see you over there have an amazing rest of your day Hey, almost forgot. I always forget to do this part, but you guys keep asking for it. You seem to love it. So I want to keep showing you the proof is in the pudding that I know what I'm doing is what I've been doing for years. So this is last week's clarity report. As you can see, I am 96% time in range. So 1% increase from last week because every single week routinely over the last few years, I have been consistently in the 90 percentages for time and range. There is a reason for that. There is a method to the madness that is blood sugars. I still live my life, mountain bike, eat pizza, go out to family events, move. I have, I have a daughter. <laughs> you can still do all these things and still have incredible blood sugars. It is possible, but you do need to know your blood sugar formula. If you want to learn more about that, that's what that training is for. So do not miss it. It is literally the answer you have been searching for. All you got to do is register, put your email in there and start watching. You click play and take notes. All right. So that's my own blood sugars from this last week. You guys wanted to see it every week. So there it is. Uh, go to diabetesinaction.com. And I'll catch you in the next one. All right. Have an amazing week, everybody. See you in the next episode. And keep up the fight.